welcome to uh, this week's episode of Flickering Dreams. Uh, due to uh, some holiday and some technical issues, you've just got myself, uh, Emma Sewell from Emma at the Movies, and Scott Forbes from Forbes Film and TV Review on Facebook. Um, today we are stalking a couple of new uh, films that are out. That's um, Bob Marley, One Love, and This Is Me Now. Um, so we're going to move Madame Webb and The Taste of Things to next week. So definitely keep an eye out for those because I'm certain there are lots of things to uh, to talk about on those two. Um, but Scott, do you want to introduce uh, One Love? Yeah, so we've all heard of the legendary reggae music performer Bob Marley. This is the biopic of his life story. Here's a clip. <laughs> Hit. Reggae is the people music. You know you're a superstar. I am a superstar. You can't separate the music and the message. You see, reggae music come to unify the people. Not everyone likes what you're saying. For your own safety, you need to stop. That's a uh, quick clip of that. Uh, do you want to start off with your thoughts on it, Scott? Yeah, I can. First of all, just looking at that clip there, if you can avoid seeing any clips or trailers from this as much as possible, then you should, because the trailers give so much away. <laughs> um, so this one, we see Bob Marley in the sort of early 80s when he is trying to create peace between political factions through the wonderful medium of music. But this quest on his behalf is a dangerous one. He does find himself in peril in a way that leaves makes him have to leave the comfort of home in order to try and bring his message in a place of safety. <sighs> So I'm not a big fan of reg reggae music. I know some Bob Marley songs just because they're out there in the world and they're famous, but it's not a genre I'd ever go to to listen to. With this, I thought, I don't know much about him, so this could be an interesting story, even if it's just quite basic. Because of how little I know, it's surely going to be interesting. And when I heard it was going to be leaning into sort of civil war and the political aspects and Jamaica, I was like, okay, there might be something quite interesting and gritty about this as well. But, gritty this film is not. This, I noticed at the end of the credits, is produced by Ziggy Marley, and I think there's other family members involved as well. And I think that is part of the reason why this is quite bland and surface level for me, in terms of where biopics can go. I thought he came across as a nice guy, and... There's an interesting story in there. He has... So, myself and my girlfriend went to see this together, and when we came home, we did a little bit of research into it and found out that there's far much more fascinating stuff that wasn't in this movie. For example, even with the kids, we see a few kids that he's got in this film. He had a lot more kids, and there's <laughs> multiple mothers, a lot of mothers to his children. That, funnily enough, is not part of this film, which is produced by his family. Um, mm. Yeah, funny that. So there's a lot of things like this where throughout the movie I was thinking, that's interesting, but I'd like to know a bit more. That's interesting, but is that really the whole story? And from that point of view, I did feel a little bit disappointed. In terms of the performances, I thought that Kingsley Benadire was fine in the leading role, but I did think Lashana Lynch, who played his wife, Rita, was really good. She was probably one of my favourite things in the film. And she's got two or three really genuinely intense scenes that I enjoyed. I don't know about you, Emma, and I can't speak for everyone, but I actually wouldn't have minded some subtitles in this film. Where There were a I couple of points. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time I got everything, but there was just some words here and there, some lines here and there 
maybe when people were speaking when there was music at the same time where I was like, what did they say? The accents were really strong. And I can't speak to the authenticity of those accents. I'm not sure. They sound fine to me, but I'm not from that part of the world and I can't speak to that. But yeah, there was some bits that I felt like I missed. So yeah, a subtitled version might have been a little bit more helpful. The music's fine. If you like that, there's plenty of it to go about. Um, yeah, it's one of those where I just thought it's fine, but not. it could have been so much better. What do you think, Alan? Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with you on most of those points. Um, I did not, you know, know of Bob Marley. I knew, knew like you say, some of his songs and things. Um, generally know a bit about that sort of scene like back then um so i was quite looking forward to it but i don't I either didn't know enough or oh, i don't know quite how to put it but i i was like there's a lot of things happening here which seem to be from very different parts of his life and almost like they've been brought together. It's like, we need to make a shorter film. So we'll just do the really big bits, which is often what happens with these sort of biopics. Um, but there's context that I'm missing. So I was a little lost in the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know what information would have helped me to, to get along with it better. But like you say... Um, Lashana Lynch was really good. Every time she got exacerbated and did the teeth sucking at him, I was just like, that's just fantastic. She she had the right sass for that sort of moment. And he was he was fine, but yeah, it was yeah. yeah. I don't know, like I say, I don't know what would have made it better, but it jumped about a lot and you didn't really get much about the other characters which i don't think helped like it didn't bring it together enough um yeah i mean the nice thing about it was that it was a packed out screening that i saw like there were so many people in there and it was really nice that people have obviously come out to watch it um i didn't i didn't hear a massive amount of positive talk as we came out so i think there's probably uh, yeah, there's a certain amount of the audience that feels the same way, but um, I think it's it's standing at about just under seven out of ten on IMDb at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure quite where I stand on on the rating. Have you have you thought of what you'd rate it? Yeah. So for me, unfortunately, I'm going to be giving this one a five out of ten. <laughs> I I think I'm on the fence. I had I had given it um a four originally, which I think um I will probably stick with. So that um we our decision is uh four point five out of ten, which makes one love a miss. Um obviously I'm sure music aficionados will probably have a, a more favorable view on it so maybe don't take us at our word on everything we say <laughs> um right with this new schedule what are we doing next so i've got box office next and now i have to work out how to share my screen nope that's the wrong button so guessing that migrations still gonna be at the top is my prediction oh <laughs> Oh, uh, this is not easy. Why is this not easy? Here we go. Here we go. So, <laughs> top 10 box office for uh, UK and Ireland. Obviously, we've got mm -hmm. half term uh, and. <gasps> oh, I know. Look at that. So um, the top position has been taken by Bob Marley. One love. Um, nearly seven million. Oh, because it came this out on is... Valentine's Day. It's like a week and a half opening. Right. So, um, yeah, 
obviously Valentine release. Um, lots of people were going out to the cinema to see things, so um, not a huge surprise it's at the top there. It did knock migration uh, down, which is now three weeks out, and obviously, as I said, half term. I genuinely can't believe how much money that's made so far. <laughs> um madame webb in number three um again i think that came out on that valentine's, valentine's day as well yeah. um 2.3 ish million i'm a generally not surprised slow, but do people know it's a superhero film but it, actually like on on this uh i mean i only saw a trailer for it or heard anything about it maybe two weeks before yeah it's kind of been hidden hasn't it yeah, so I genuinely don't know what was going on there, but we will talk about it next week. <laughs> and then uh, number four, uh, Argyle, still going strong. Um, Wonka, again, not moving out of the top 10. 11 weeks, 62 million. It's unbelievable. Uh, the Iron Claw is uh, still in there at number six. Uh, 1.6 million, so it's not doing too badly. Mean Girls as well, six weeks um, in now. It's eight and a half million. Uh, <laughs> half term means Peppa Pig is having a cinema party. Uh, <laughs> not made the million yet. I'm not entirely surprised by that fact. Um, anyone but you got its continued Valentine's release. So nine weeks in the cinema i can't believe it so good and, I Com. and i still haven't seen it um oh, Emma. <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying i swear it doesn't line up with anything but <laughs> so nearly 11 million on that one and uh lastly in at 10 is all of our strangers which really please that's still in there it's four mm -hmm. and a half million um yeah so that's a uh, good one there not really surprised about a, a lot of it <laughs> i could say actually since the last time we did pod uh, i have seen all the strangers now so i'm with the rest of you it's a nine out of ten for me it's it's fun no sorry i gave it eight out of ten it's oh <laughs> it's a brilliant film i wasn't too keen on the ending but acting amazing <laughs> Just, yeah, all the performance is great. The actual story, the ghost of the element, very impressed by it. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely... Like, everyone I recommend it to has, has loved it, so glad you've uh, got to see that one now. Um, next up, we are going to talk... <laughs> this is me now, which is... Um, <sighs> a one-hour, five-minute movie... Visual music album. video visual album i like that one um that is basically telling us the story of uh j-lo's um life love the whole journey uh here's a clip uh, i know what they say about me about hopeless romantics that we're weak and I'm not weak I learned the hard way not all love stories have a happy ending so yes this uh, fever dream maybe um it's obviously to coincide with uh her her album that's coming out um genuinely don't know how to describe it um it is a massively visual um escapade through j-lo's life and music and who knows who knows <laughs> i've just got the, the trailers playing in the other screen i've got up and i'm still like oh my god yeah that bit um I, at the beginning i really didn't quite know what was going on uh, it is visually stunning. I will say that. I did enjoy a lot of the um, pieces that were put together. Um, I Part of me was sitting there going, I reckon AI wrote the whole thing. <laughs> wrote it, designed it. 
I'm Jello fans are going to hate me. Um, <laughs> but it's absolutely mental. And I think, um, Scott, you dropped in our, our group chat that um, you'd watched it. And I went and looked it up. And just some of the names that are starring in it. The Kamiya was um, Absolutely insane. Um, there's a section in it. Um, with all the zodiac signs and you know they're co making a commentary on her life and every one of them i mean i didn't know all of them but the majority of them i recognized from things i was like how on earth does anyone get all these people not in a room together but in a room together <laughs> uh, yeah so what we've got we've got there like mm. jane fonda trevor noah kiki palmer post malone um there's what's there uh sophia, sophia Vergara, Gara. and neil degrasse tyson I... <laughs> who cast like did jennifer english just go into her phone and just scroll down random lanes i'll take them i'll take them i know them let's get them i genuinely think maybe she sent out like a mass text and went i need some people <laughs> for a thing Who's available at one o'clock on this date? <laughs> oh, it was mental. Just, yeah. I mean, the list is amazing. Even if you just scroll through that, it's entertaining. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I didn't quite understand all of those bits, but I actually saw everyone that was in it who had a, a part, a bit part in it, was actually quite quite good i thought they played it right to get the sort of zany i, I don't know how to describe it but <laughs> it is it was a mental hour of my life that's what i'm gonna say uh, what did you think of it Scott? yeah i didn't really know what this was at all <laughs> uh, the day it came out i was just on amazon and i was like oh there's, there's something new with jennifer lopez i didn't know she had a new film out looked at it it was like Oh, it's like an hour long. What is this? Um, and then just put it on and without really knowing what I was away to watch. And I'm still not sure what I watched. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so weird because is it a film? Is it an extended music video? What is this? Um, I, so the film, we see it. She is on a bike. She falls off a bike and then it sort of goes to her in this mechanical factory where there's this malfunctioning giant metal heart and she has to feed it rose petals to try and make it stop being broken. And then it flips to a whole other thing where we've got the marriage marriage's storyline where she is like addicted to love uh, and where she's having to go from man to man. And then we see her getting married to multiple men, but it's a music video and they cut between three different guys, one of them being Dancing with the Stars, Derek Huff. Genuinely um, didn't know who any of them were. The blonde one I recognised just as a dancer is <laughs> quite famous, but um, yeah, it was just, that part was actually okay. And then their friend, her friends are doing some sort of intervention for her. And yeah, as you said, you've got the people in the zodiac signs all commenting on her life from the heavens, like some sort of watchers. Um, <laughs> if you take a sort of Marvel view of it, um, very multiverse, very multiverse, very, very multiverse. And you think that it seems to be like a commentary on her own life, especially with the, the love life sort of thing. That's very easy to sort of see how that relates to her own life and the multiple marriages and things like that. And interestingly, uh, as well, she actually put $20 million of her own money into making this because I'm guessing she asked other people and they didn't want to put money into it. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to do it herself. Yeah. That might be, that might be unfair, but <laughs> so I watched this and I was seeing it as just this little weird thing. The direction was all over the place. The editing was frantic as hell and quite annoying how fast it was switching around, but I was watching this with my girlfriend and she loved this. So she explained to me afterwards about the meaning that she got from it and how she, it was all about self-love and self-worth and how with Jennifer Lopez, she's got to not think about 
what other people think of her and it's all about what she thinks of herself and the self-esteem side of things and that inner child and inner love and how that is essentially the metaphor that all these bizarre images are coming together to mean which when she actually broke it down to me i was like okay that kind of does make sense ish but it's still a but poo <laughs> way of putting that together uh, <laughs> so yeah i i i'll agree with you about like the production value though i thought that was brilliant the music itself, but we've not even commented on the actual songs and music. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's J Lo, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. But <laughs> I thought the songs were perfectly decent. There's lots of good choreography involved. Mm. Clearly, a lot of time and effort has went into the dancing. And Jennifer Lopez, um, as I'm sure Bob and other guys will agree, was stunning as always. It just makes me a little yeah. depressed that, you know, which is in her 50s. <laughs> And it's that incredible. She doesn't even look anywhere near that age. It's uh... amazing. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, I thought this was interesting. <laughs> so, okay. so my written reviews went up and I actually compared it to something called Black is King that Beyonce did sort of a few years ago in connection to the Lion King live action. It's a similar oh. idea where it's a visual album, sort of Lion King-esque in the storyline, although I wouldn't really have got that unless I knew that before going into it. <laughs> I hated that film. It was like one of my, I think I gave it yeah. like three and it was one of my worst of the year. So I'm like now thinking, do I just not like visual albums? And then I was thinking, there was something when I was a kid from Michael Jackson called Ghosts, where it's more of a musical movie, but again, it's about an hour long and it's set with a storyline with, with all these music things in between. I'm like, I don't know if it's quite the same thing, but it's much better than these. And I would definitely recommend if you haven't seen or any <laughs> listeners, viewers, if you haven't seen Michael Jackson's Ghost, I would highly recommend it. This is me now, however. Mm, I don't know. It came on, one of the songs came on at work in the radio in the background. And I just sort of, <laughs> threw, like, like a meerkat, I was like, that's bringing flashbacks of what I just watched. And I was like, I recognise that song from that film so it works the marketing ploy works Scott. yeah it made me think i recognize that oh yeah that's right she's got a new album out because i saw that film <laughs> visual album thing that was promoting the album yeah I, for me I, just for the sheer creativity of it and i'm probably being very generous i'm gonna say a six so i actually i went six as well like i I enjoyed the music and stuff and visually great. I'm still confused though. Yeah. Um, and it was directed by um, Dave Mayers, who does um, a lot of music videos, which does, exp it, it is just an extended music video yeah. essentially. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a unanimous six from Flickering Dreams. For <laughs> this is me now. Um, but it is only an hour and five minutes of your life. So, <laughs> But it's not a film. I, I, if I'm doing the Taylor Swift thing, it's not a film. This is not a film either. But I mean, don't, Taylor Swift don't start. Think it's a concert, so <laughs> we can agree that's not a film. But this does have a narrative-ish. It's, it's going in I'm the not... list of all the films I've watched in the year anyway. It's, it's counting in that list. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll allow it. Um, I haven't put my foot down about anything today, and I'm in charge of the pod. <laughs> I should have, should have been throwing my weight around about it. Um, so those are the two um, main things we were going to talk about. Uh, any other business, though? Obviously, we've just had uh, the BAFTAs at the weekend. Um, how did you do, Scott, on all your predicting? So I... Not great. I got, 30, <laughs> I got 13 out of 23. So... Actually, I got well, that's still not bad. I, I got helped out towards the end of the night with the bigger awards. So I got like film director, <laughs> all the acting. I got all those ones right. Um, there weren't any surprises. I, I was very safe with my picks. Um, and I, it actually started off really well. Like the first award of the night was original screenplay going to Anatomy of a Fall. And I was like, ooh, I didn't totally expect that, but I'm so glad I was right with that one. 
And then as I was watching it, it was like wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong. I was like, what are the BAFTAs doing? What are uh, and then what I mean wrong towards them. wrong in that you didn't want them that, to win. Oh, sorry, or... yeah, predictions wrong. And actually, to some extent, what I wanted to win didn't as well. But this was a award ceremony very much dominated by Oppenheimer and Poor Things, as I expected. And Oppenheimer did slightly come up on top of the two. <sighs> Three awards for Zone of Interest. God, just... ah. well, we can slate it. I don't know how it won yes. awards. Yes, <laughs> the lovers aren't here today. <laughs> Oh god, I genuinely hated it. I, it's I I liked the idea of it, mm -hmm. but none of it really hit home for me. So when everyone's going, oh my god, it's going to win all the awards, I'm like, really? There's so many other things that were better. Well, here's the thing: it's it's the internet, and <laughs> some of you watching right now might be the ones commenting <laughs> on my page. And well, <laughs> good for you. But the thing is, I understand what this film is about. All the people, they're like, you just don't get it. You just don't understand it. It's about the horror of the banality <laughs> of life. And it's what you're not seeing, but behind the wall, it's horrific. It's like, okay, yeah, I understand that. That yeah. doesn't make the film not boring. And I've seen so many people be like, yes, it's boring. I loved it. Yes, it's boring. That's the point. If it's, it's, it's just so stupid. Boring. You can't go to a film <laughs> and be like, boring is the purpose. It's got to... Even films that do have a point like that and can be slow. Slow films can still be brilliant. But you can't comment saying it's supposed to be boring because surely no film's supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be engaging and I didn't find most of it engaging. No, it's just... Um, uh... I, and um, my friend uh, Hannah, who I go to the cinema with, she was waiting for me to see this. And I, when I came out, I was mad. And I yeah. looked at you and I said, I'm mad. And I'm going to make everyone else mad. Um, so I did my bullet point list, sent it over. And then my, my friend said, oh, what did you think of it? I was like, I'm going to copy this list to you. Then we're not going to talk about it again because she loved it. And um, basically she's like, I'm not going to talk to you for the rest of the day. Uh, so, yeah, very, very Marmite. Yeah. So one best British film and best foreign language film. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I, as a whole, I thought the show itself. Did you watch the show? No, no. Um, I did. I was super mad. I'm going to rant for a second. Oh, okay, the BBC can take a run and jump. So obviously, avoided social media because they record it and then and they play it back there, to yeah. you. And we were sitting there. I was watching it, and I was texting my friends. And a BBC News alert popped up halfway through telling you who won the big awards. And I was so angry. And so were a lot of other people. <laughs> yeah, that's why I know with BAFTAs, you just put the phone away for seven o'clock when it starts. You're like, so nope. angry. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the BBC News app did us dirty. <laughs> Oh, um, but I mean, it wasn't a surprise who who had won like said, all of those ones. But went with that. yeah, but I mean, the show itself was alright. I thought David Tennant was given decent stuff to work with for the most part. Not everything, but compared to the last few years, which have been absolute <laughs> train wrecks, I, I do feel the dog should have had a little platform on the okay. on the actual stage just to be constantly there. But, maybe, um, maybe. You know, I, I didn't expect the Sophie Alice Baxter song. That was fine. Okay, I, cool. I love that. I it's thought a good it was song. a nice addition. But why did they not have Barry Keown up there as Make one it. of the dancers? I mean, <laughs> uh, no. But yes, maybe. Um, no, just as one of the dancers, I thought it would have been so much fun. <laughs> that would have been a good touch, yeah. Um, I hated the Nick Mohammed bit. Um, oh, that was bad, wasn't random it? random character he was... To I don't be... even know what that was from. Not a clue. Um, um, but mm. yeah, that was that I could have done without that part. But otherwise, yeah, not a bad show. The speeches were okay for the most part. Um, I actually quite liked Divine Joy Randolph's speech. That oh was, my that was god! A bit emotional. I I was it's crying so much. Of what she's going to say at the Oscars when she does yeah. win because yeah, she, she will win. She does have to win. Um, but yeah, it was, 
I was very happy. Um, I think Christopher Nolan seemed a bit sour-faced a lot of the time, even when he was winning. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about. Yeah, that was very, very odd to witness. Yeah, completely thrown. Well, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, moving on to the next ones, um, which are happening very soon, actually. Uh, I was messaging you guys in the group chat about that, and it seems like something interesting is happening with the Saga Wars in that they are going to be live on Netflix. And that will be on this weekend? I think... I, I think have it, entirely lost track. I think it is this Saturday night going into Sunday morning at 1am on the Sunday morning. And you can see that live on Netflix. I'm tempted because it's Saturday going into Sunday, so I'm not working the next day. But... I don't know if I actually will, or I might just check it in the morning. I'll probably just check it in the morning. But if it's something that anyone's interested in, mm. that could be something a bit different. Um, and then after that, it'll be on the road to the Oscars in a couple of weeks. 10th of uh, March there. I've not yet. So as I don't know how much you're aware I am of it, on my page when I'm doing my yearly lists, I do my sort of best and worst of the year based around from one Oscar ceremony to the next as opposed to mm -hmm. the calendar year and so I'm starting now to get in my head about okay I'm gonna have to do my final list soon of what I've got in the top 10 best and worst <laughs> and I also do my favorite performances of the four categories as well so I'm trying to dwindle down those lists to like <laughs> my top 40 and that as well so that might be some fun for me to try and get in place over the weekend um to post uh, in a few days oh. before the Oscars. I will be intrigued to uh, see your lists. One thing, the, it's, I always think that when you see some of these lists, and we proved it actually with our ones when we did the calendar year one, that we were all quite different. In fact, we were all very different. Whereas when you look online, so often when you see these best of all time or best of the year, it's always the same list of films. And it always makes me wonder... Are these actually these people's favourite films of the year or are they just seeing this because it's the ones that they're supposed to think are the best of the year? Yeah. There's all those guilty pleasure films that people just should be embracing and say, if that's one of the favourite films you've seen that year, even if it is a bit silly, even if it's unpopular, hands up, The Marvels, it is in currently in my top five for the year of 23, 24. And I do not care if people hate me for it. So of interest. Unless in the next couple of weeks something outrageous is going to come out, it's going to be my worst film of the last 12 months. I'm going to get hate for it online. I don't care. People need to be honest more when they're doing this sort of thing. Yeah. And I don't think most people are. And so that is what I love about this group. And <laughs> when I do uh, sort of do these lists is that <laughs> it, I've been doing it for a few years now. And I like when people agree with me, but I've got to be honest, and if you don't like it, that's how it is. Uh, Scott, I hate to say it, I love when people disagree with you because your comment sections are the most hilarious place to be. Uh. As long as they're not abusive. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind when people disagree, and even more so when they actually explain and give a reason why they disagree and you can get into a conversation about it. When people just say, you don't understand it, or you're wrong, <laughs> or they just flat out, are sexist or racist or mm. something like that, then it's like, I just can't take you seriously in the slightest and I'm just going to ignore you. But yeah, give me, if you don't agree with something that I say, tell me and tell me why you disagree. Yeah. And that could be, if I like something that you dislike or if I dislike something you like, explain it. Let's have a conversation. That's what's fun about it. That's why we do this podcast. <laughs> you know, we don't always agree with things, but we chat so... about it and we're still friends at the end of the day. So we can all judge each other for having dubious taste in movies. That's what it's all about. Before we started this tonight, we talked about what might be coming out soon. And guys, there's a bit of a big film called June Part 2 oh. that's coming out in a week and a bit. I don't know that one, Scott. No, you never heard of that? <laughs> hmm. Another one of those two-parters that are terrorising Hollywood right now. Mm. Um, and yeah, here's a secret. I didn't like the first one very much. And here's a secret. Yeah, yeah I didn't either. And that's fine, because other people love it. Good for you. We don't always have to love the same things. 
This is fun when it's just us, Emma. We can just have a rant about things. <laughs> this is fantastic. Maybe we should say to Bob, we want to add a, a little rant section, just like bloopers at the end. Yeah, let's just <laughs> moan about films and about oh, <laughs> commenters on the internet. Well, I am sure next, another award ceremony, obviously, at the weekend, we will have plenty of stuff to moan about, but uh, all the same films are winning the awards, potentially. Mm. Hopefully not. Hopefully we get oh, some shots in there. Never mind. Well, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed for that. Um, mm-hmm. but, so that is us for this week. I don't know how we managed to waffle this long, Scott. Or maybe we should keep the ranting down to five minutes. Um, it's but, fun uh, to rant, yeah. though. We're British. <laughs> we like morning. This is true. This is very true. And I think we have done the British proud in this episode. Um, so... Next week, hopefully, back to some regularly scheduled programming. With uh, I've got to catch up on that quiz. Tra- Traumatising me. I I kind of think maybe we should do the quiz today, but it's not fair <laughs> with so many other people not here. Uh, but um, thank you for uh, watching or listening. Obviously, remember to subscribe. Um, get those automatic downloads going and you can listen to us every time it's released. Um, Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening or watching Flickering Dreams. You can find the video version on YouTube and the audio version on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get each of the weekly episodes as they are released. We'll see you at the movies.